Hey everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here. We're gonna create some fire in Adobe After Effects. Some really nice details here, almost that liquid quality in the fire. So a quick look at this project, it's gonna procedurally create fire based on a white shape. In this case, it's an ornament from a font, but it could be text or a logo, or even a shape that you've rotoed out of a piece of footage that you can then composite back in. Lots of fractal noise, lots of turbulent displays. We're gonna run through all of these settings. I'm gonna be working in HD resolution in this tutorial, but full disclosure, the graphics we shot at the very beginning of the video are the exact same setup, but in 4K resolution, so I could get those really nice close-ups. If you're looking for the 4K file or you just wanna skip the whole tutorial, this project file will, of course, be available to Texture Labs Patreon supporters. But either way, by the end of this video, we're gonna have some awesome procedural fire effects going. Let's get into After Effects and get started. All right, getting started here in After Effects, and what I've got is an HD comp, 24 frames per second, and it is six seconds long, with just a single layer in here. It's this bird shape. This is actually a live text layer, though. It just happens to be an ornament font. The jumping off point for this project doesn't have to be a text layer, but what we want is a white shape on a solid black background. So I'm gonna drop a black solid in the background, and for the sake of this video, I'm gonna rename this text layer to Source. All right, then to get started, we're gonna create a fractal noise layer. So with a new solid, I'll call it fractal flames and then apply the fractal noise effect. And this is gonna be a fairly simple fractal noise. So first of all, I'm gonna change the fractal type to dynamic and then turn on the little invert checkbox, which gives us kind of a stringy noise rather than cloudy. And then we'll give it some animation. So first of all, let's animate the evolution and give the whole thing a little bit of life. I'm gonna set a keyframe at the beginning with the evolution at zero, then go out to the end of the timeline and bring the evolution up to three full rotations. Then one more little bit of animation. I wanna make this whole pattern travel upwards. To do that, I'm gonna use the sub offset, which creates a little bit more sense of depth than the regular offset. And and I'm just gonna be animating the second value here, the Y axis. So let's take this from an offset of zero at the beginning of the timeline, and then out at the end here, we'll take the Y value down to negative 570. All right, then I'm also gonna bring the subscaling up to 60, just making that pattern a little bit bigger. All right, nothing too crazy, but that is the fractal flames layer, and I'm gonna end up using this more than once. So what I'm gonna do is pre-compose this, Command-Shift-Z, Control-Shift-Z, or you can right-click and pre-compose, and what I wanna do is move all attributes into new composition. That'll bring the fractal noise effect with it. Okay, then for the moment, I'm gonna turn this layer off and focus on giving this original white shape, the source layer, a few effects. So this is the shape that's gonna be on fire. I don't want the edges of it to be too clean. I want them a little bit distorted, a little bit blurry. So I'm gonna use two effects. The first is gonna be the displacement map effect. And what I'm gonna do is point the displacement map at the fractal flames layer. Horizontal displacement's gonna be three and vertical is gonna be six. So that creates just a little bit of distortion as the fractal moves across it. Okay, one more effect, I'm gonna use the compound blur effect. Kind of a similar thing, I'm gonna point it at the fractal flames layer and I'll bring the maximum blur to four and that creates a little bit of blurriness based on that layer. So with those two effects together, we get kind of a nice heat haze effect. Okay, that's it for the source layer. And next up, I wanna basically create the overall shape of the fire. So what I want is this shape, but I want it kind of smeared upwards and distorted a little bit. What I'm gonna do is create an adjustment layer right above this source layer and below the fractal flames layer, which is still turned off. And first of all, I'm just gonna apply a Gaussian blur to it with a value of 50. All right, then here's something that's gonna be a little unusual about this layer. I'm gonna switch it over to a blending mode that doesn't get used very often, the exclusion blending mode. So this is one of those inversion blending modes that come in handy every once in a while, and it gives us this kind of negative glow thing happening. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna rename this adjustment layer and call it inversion. And I'm gonna add a few more effects on here. In fact, this layer is gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting on creating this fire effect. So next up, I want a kind of a motion blur, but I want it to blur in one direction, just straight up. Now in the blur effects, it's not super obvious how to get a single direction blur, but there is a way to do it with this CC vector blur. And what I need to do in vector blur is change the blur type to direction fading, 
and then point the vector map at any plain solid layer. So I'm going to point it at the black background layer. And then, of course, I need to turn it up. I'm going to take the amount up to 140. And right now that's going in the wrong direction. So let's flip that around and take the angle to 180. It's kind of unfortunate there's not a more obvious way to get this effect, this kind of single direction blur, but vector blur does come in handy for this. Okay, next up, I want to take this really linear blurry shape and give the whole thing some distortion. So I'm going to start with the same effect that we used a minute ago on the source layer, the displacement map effect pointed at the fractal flames layer. So what I can do is just copy this effect and paste it onto the inversion adjustment layer. But this time, let's crank it up a lot higher. So I'm going to go to 15 on the horizontal and all the way up to 75 on the vertical. And that starts to create a pretty cool looking effect. In fact, it looks like you could take this in a few different directions for different effects. Let me do one thing really quickly. So some of these effects have blurred and distorted, not just this shape, but also the edges of the composition. But we can use the solid composite effect to clean that up and fill it back in with black, I'll just set the color on that effect to black. So we've got kind of the basis of this effect here, but there are a few ways I want to start to refine this. And first of all, I want it to be a little higher contrast and a little bit grungier to get rid of these soft edges. I'm going to add in another effect, the fractal noise effect. And first of all, while we can see this fractal noise nice and clearly, let's give it some animation. Pretty simple. I'm just going to animate the offset turbulence. I'll set a key at the beginning and then at the end of the timeline, bring the Y offset down to 100. No big deal. That's just going to animate the whole thing up kind of slowly. All right, then I'm going to take this fractal noise effect and change the blending mode of this effect over to color burn. Then a little bit of adjustment on the brightness and contrast of the fractal noise. I'm going to take the brightness up to 40 and the contrast down to 75. So this effect just gives us a little bit of grunginess in the edges. It's also moving at a different speed than this other distortion. So we get a little bit of a sense of depth starting to happen. All right, let's add another effect on here and give it some twisty swirliness with the turbulent displace effect. And this effect, I'm going to switch the displacement style to twist smoother and I'll bring the amount down to 20. Then I'm also going to animate one property on this effect, the offset property, so that these little twists kind of travel upward as well. So I'll key this to start at the default position, 540 on the Y axis, and then at the end of the timeline, take it down to negative 260. Then I'm also going to take the complexity up quite a bit. The default is one, but I'm going to go all the way to seven on the complexity, and that just gives us some really nice twisting, curling details. All right, then I'm actually going to do one more instance of turbulent displace, and this is going to be for some kind of bigger twisting back and forth. All I'm going to do is bring the amount down to 20, and then we'll just keyframe the evolution on this just to make it kind of slowly change over time. So I'll set a key for the evolution to start at zero, then out at the end of the timeline, set a key with two full rotations. So that's pretty subtle, but it's going to help make the overall fire just kind of sway back and forth. Okay, one more effect on this layer, a very, very simple one, and that is the offset effect. So offsets just going to allow me to bring this entire effect downward a little bit and kind of line it back up with the source with the shape of this bird. So I'm just going to shift the center Y position from 540 just up to 560. All right, and that is the inversion adjustment layer. Okay, next up, I'm going to turn this fractal flames layer back on and we can use this layer somehow. So if I set this layer to overlay mode, it does give kind of one more level of contrast, and a little bit more detail, but I'm going to introduce just one more level of complexity in here first. And what I want to do is use the displacement map effect on this fractal flames layer. And the goal is going to be to create a displacement map that makes this pattern kind of wrap around and react to this shape as it moves upward. Now, if I point the displacement map at the source layer, which is that bird shape, and let's crank it way up to 100 and 100. So that sort of works. This is the general kind of idea. But what I really need is a version of this source layer that's really customized to be a displacement map. So to create a duplicate of this layer, I could just duplicate it or I could pre-comp it and then duplicate the pre-comp. But I like to kind of keep the pre-comps to a minimum. So I'm going to use a different method to create basically a duplicate of this layer. And that is to create a new solid at the top. I'll call this source displace. And I'm going to use the calculations effect. 
And using calculations, I can actually point this second source option, the second layer dropdown, point it to the source layer set to effects and masks, and then bring the second layer opacity up to 100%, and on the blending mode, change it to copy. And that basically just gives us an exact copy of the live text layer. It's sort of like having a pre-comp, but we get to keep this live text layer here in the same composition. Now I will point out if you're not using a live text layer, if this source is like a vector object you imported or something, calculations doesn't work quite as reliably. It won't reflect scale or position changes. So if you're not using live text, just make a duplicate of your layer or a pre-comp of your layer and don't mess with this calculations effect. But either way, with a duplicate of some kind here, what I want to do is manipulate this to be more of the displacement map I want. So first of all, I just want to blur it a little bit. I'm going to use Gaussian blur and bring that up to 20. And then I'm also going to give this some fractal noise. Totally default settings, but same as basically every other fractal noise in this project, I'm going to animate the offset turbulence and make it travel upward. So here we'll go from 540 at the beginning out to zero here at the end. That'll travel kind of slowly, but enough just to give it some life. All right, then finally, right now this image has values in it that run the full spectrum between black and white, which will make the displacement map effect basically send things in every direction. But I wanna limit the values in here to being just between black and 50% gray. So if I put a levels effect on here and I bring the white output value down to the halfway point or 127, now the displacement map can only bend things up and to the left or down and to the right. It's gonna make the effect look a little bit more natural. All right, our displacement map is ready to go, and we don't even need this layer visible at all. It's just gonna be a reference. I'm gonna turn that off. But then back on the fractal flames layer, I'm gonna keep the displacement all the way up at 100 and 100, but I'm gonna point it at the source displace layer, set to effects and masks. And now we get this nice flow that kind of wraps around the shape and that fractal noise gives it some distortion. All right, I'm gonna set this layer to overlay mode, and let's check out the animation so far. And I think that displacement map effect does kind of give the fire almost that liquid kind of quality. And um, yeah, looking pretty cool. Okay, next up, we need a little bit more texture in here, a little bit more depth in the fire. So I'm gonna create one more layer with just some fractal noise and some turbulent displace on it. So this will be a new solid. Eventually, I'm gonna set this to overlay mode. So I'm just gonna call it overlay and we'll add a few effects to it first. So the first effect is gonna be a gradient ramp effect, and I'm just gonna hit the little swap color button. So when this layer is set to overlay, that's just gonna help the fire be a little bit darker toward the bottom, a little brighter and a little bit hotter toward the top. So I'm just gonna drag the start and end points of this gradient, basically so it starts kind of at the bottom of the shape and then maybe gets to full blast brightness about two thirds of the way up or so. All right, let's set this layer back to normal for a second and give it some fractal noise. And I'm gonna change the fractal type to dynamic and turn the invert button on and then bring the contrast up a little bit to 150. So this one's gonna be some kind of larger blobs of dark and light. I'm gonna scale this up a decent amount. I'll bring the scale up to 200 and then like everything else in this project, I want it to travel upwards. So let's start with the offset turbulence at 540 and then out at the end of the timeline, this one's gonna move more quickly. I'm gonna take it all the way to negative 1250. Then to blend this effect together with the gradient, I'm gonna set the fractal noise effects blending mode to multiply. So that's gonna give us kind of these big shadows. I also need um, a fractal noise with some tiny hot speckles, almost like little, little bright flames. So let's go for another fractal noise. And in the transform, I'm gonna take the scale all the way down to nine. And I'll also animate the offset turbulence in this one. So starting at the default 540, and then at the end of the timeline going to negative 540. And this one also, I want it to kind of flicker and change a little bit more. It needs a little bit more than just the offset animated. So I'm gonna animate the evolution here too, starting at zero and at the end of the timeline going up to five full rotations. All right, then we'll change the blending mode of this fractal noise to add mode. And let's adjust the brightness and contrast and make this blend in a little bit better. I'm gonna take the contrast down to 50 and the brightness down to negative 48. 
All right, so we've got the big details on multiply mode and the small details on add mode. They're kind of moving at different speeds, which is nice. Finally, I'm just gonna give this layer a little bit of turbulent displace. And all I'm gonna do is bring the size down to 30 and also animate the offset and make it travel upwards. So we'll take the offset from 540 at the beginning to negative 50 at the end of the timeline. That just makes everything kind of bend and warp a little bit. And then I'm gonna set this layer back to overlay mode and check out everything together. We are ready for some color. So obviously we could probably spend a half hour easily coloring this thing, but I'm just gonna to try to take the shortest route possible here and get some decent fire color going. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer on top and call this colorize. And first of all, just put a levels effect on here. I just wanna get a little bit more contrast in the blacks and in the darker grays. So I'm gonna bring the gamma up to 0.8. Then to bring some color in, I'm gonna use the colorama effect. Now I really wish this effect was a little bit more friendly. I love using gradient maps in Photoshop, which is effectively what this is, but for some reason it's gotta be set up in a circle and it can be kind of tough to use. That's okay, in this instance, I'm just gonna use one of the presets, which is actually not bad. It's called Fire. It is a little bit too intense, so I'm gonna take the blend with original up to 30%. Okay, then how could we create fire without some glow? Pretty cheesy, the glow at default settings. And rather than sitting here kind of fiddling with this, I'm just gonna punch in some settings that I have written down here that ended up looking pretty good. I'm gonna take the glow radius up to 300 and the glow intensity up to two. Then on the glow colors, I'm gonna switch it from original over to A and B colors, and then customize these A and B colors. So color A is gonna be a bright orange, number FF6500, and then color B is gonna be kind of a medium red, which is A91200. All right, then finally, one last effect that I think helps make the whole thing a little bit more punchy, and that is the unsharp mask effect. That's just gonna sharpen up some of the details. I'm gonna set the amount at 100 and leave everything else at its default. And let's queue up a preview here, and that is our fire. Pretty fun effect just to sit and watch it go. There's something kind of hypnotic about it. And what's nice here is that everything points back at this live text layer, this source layer. So it's very, very easy to change this up. This could be actual text. And you can even kind of scrub through fonts. Obviously some shapes, some fonts and things are gonna work better than others, but we can always get in and change some of the settings on these adjustment layers. So if I bring up, for example, the vector blur, that's gonna make the flames taller. All right, well, I hope you guys will enjoy experimenting with this setup. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'll post this project file for Patreon supporters, which will include the 4K version of this comp. It takes a minute to render, but you get some really great details at that high resolution. In any case, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.